Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to section 10.3, Operations with Radical Expressions. We're going to jump right into things, and we're going to start with simplifying each expression. With number one, take a close look at number one, and now I'm going to bring up another expression. Would you say that this blue expression closely represents this expression right here? Well, if the square root of 5 was the same as x, I would say that this is exactly the same thing as this. Well, let's stick with that blue expression and simplify it. Well, we have all like terms, so now we have 6x plus 2x is 8x and then minus 5x, and that's going to simplify to be 3x. So our simplified answer for this expression would be 3x. Now let's jump over to number 1. Here, we have all the same square roots. If we have everything is the same, or the square root is the same, we can treat those just like x's or y's. Just treat them like your fruits and vegetables. So here, 6 square root of 5 plus 2 square root of 5 is 8 square root 5. And then we're going to subtract 5 square root 5. And we're going to come up with 3 square root 5. Notice how that square root of 5 always tags along. This is our simplified answer. Notice what's in the red and what's in the blue. It's the same exact thing. The only thing that changes is the x and the square root of 5. Looking at number 2, let's try it again. We have all like terms, if you will. We have all the same kind of radical, so now we can add them up across the board. Here we have 8 square root 11 minus 9 square root 11. Well, 9 is more than 8 and we're taking it away, so now we have a negative 1. A negative 1 what? Square root of 11 for your simplified answer. Moving on to number 3. Now we don't have all the same radicals. We have the square root of 2 and we also have square root of 11. What we have to do is combine all the square roots of 11 and all the square roots of 2, like they are x's and y's, a's or b's. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's start with the square root of 2. Here we have 7 of them. Here we have a minus 6 of them. That's important, minus 6. So we combine them to come up with just a square root of 2. And then moving on to the square root of 11. Here we have 8 and a negative 4 or minus 4. So it's going to be a plus 4 square root 11 for our simplified answer. Moving on to number 4. Do we have any of the same radicals? Yes, we do. Here we have a square root of 3 and a square root of 3. In the middle we have square roots of 5, square roots of 5. Let's start with the square root of 3. Here's a positive 15. We're going to subtract 11 from it. So it's going to be 4 square root and then our square root was 3. And then the blue guys, be very careful. Pay attention to your signs in front of the numbers. This is a negative 14 plus 6, so it's going to be a minus 8 square root 5. Moving forward, number 5. Now are our square roots the same? No, they are not. But do we have any tools in our tool belt that can help us with this situation? Can I rewrite each of these square roots? Can I rewrite each of these radicands? Well, let's go ahead and try it. 6 times the square root of, how can I rewrite that 27 with a perfect square? How about a 9 times 3? Well, now moving on to the 12, 8, and then the square root of 12 would be the same thing as 4 times 3, because 4 is a perfect square, plus then 2 times what goes in, what's a perfect square that goes into 75? That is 25 times 3. 3. So now, if we continue and we take all our perfect squares out, this guy is going to turn into 3, and then we're going to multiply that times the 6, and then we still have that square root of 3 left. Then it's going to be plus 8. Then it's going to be times what? When we take that 4 out of the square root, it turns into a 2. You drop the square root, and it just turns into a plain old normal 2. Still with that square root of 3 attached, plus 2 times the square root of 25 now turns into what? It turns into a 5, still with that square root of 3 tagged along. Let's clean up everything. First thing we have to clean up is our multiplication. So it's 18 square root 3 plus 16 square root 3 plus 
10 square root 3. So we cleaned everything up. Now what do you notice about the radical? The radicals are all the same. They are all the square roots of 3. So what does that tell us? That means we can add right across the board and that gives us 44 square root 3 for our final answer. Number six, kind of the same situation, looking at our square roots. Are they the same? No, they are not. Can we rewrite them? Yes, we can. It's going to be four and then a square root of nine times six because nine is a perfect square. It goes into 54 six times plus two times the square root of four times six. Cleaning things up here, we take the nine out. The nine turns into a three outside of the square root, the four turns into a 2 outside the square root. So now we have 4 times 3 which gives us 12 square root 6 plus 2 times 2 gives us 4 square root 6. Now we have the same radicals again so we combine our like terms to get 16 square root of 6 for our answer. Here we go with three more. Now with seven, we are multiplying these together. When we multiply, we have the number in front of the radical. We multiply those numbers in front together. So two times four is going to be eight. And then we have to multiply the numbers inside the square roots together. So now we have eight square root 18. Can we break that 18 apart even more? Yes, we can. If we keep going with it, we have 8 times the square root of what's a perfect square that goes into 18. That's going to be 9 times 2. The 9 comes out. It turns into a 3. So it's going to be 8 times 3, which is 24. 24, bring down the square root of 2 for our answer. Number 8, now we have the same thing that we did in number 7, but we have to distribute this 4 square root of 2 to this guy and to the guy in the back because there is uh, two numbers inside that parenthesis. So let's go ahead and try it. We have 4 times 3. Please remember that we have to multiply the numbers in front of the square root together and the numbers in the square root together times, so it's going to be 12 times the square root of 4. And then this guy times this guy is going to be plus 4 times 2 is 8 times the square root of 12. Can we rewrite these square roots? Well, the square root of 4 turns into 2, and so it's going to be 12 times 2. And then we have plus 8 times the square root of 4 times 3, because 4 is a perfect square. This 4 can come out of the square root and it turns into a 2. So let's clean up everything. Here we go. 12 times 2 is 24 plus 2 times 8 is 16. Please don't forget about the square root of 3. So our final answer is 24 plus 16 square root 3. And then finally with 9. Now it's taking 8 and adding another term to it. It's basically just two binomials that we have to multiply together. So I have to take this guy times here and here. So let's do that right now. So I multiply the five times the two to get 10. The two times the 10 inside the square root to get the square root of 20. Now this guy times negative five to get a negative 25 square root two. Now I move on to the next one. Now I have to do the same thing with that guy here and there. So I get plus 6 square root 50 because you multiply the numbers and what's inside the square root and then times the negative 5 to get negative 15 square root 5. Can we simplify anything? I'm going to rewrite my square roots. Here I have 10 times the square root of 4 times 5 because five is, or because 4 is a perfect square rather. Minus 25, can't rewrite 2, so I'm going to leave it as 2. Plus, and then 6 square root, what, what's a perfect square that goes into 50? That's going to be 25 times 2. And then minus 15 square root 
five. Cleaning this stuff up, the four comes out. It turns into a two. Can I take anything else out? No, I can take this 25 out and it turns into a five. Now, let's clean it up even a little bit more. 10 times two is 20, square root five minus 25, square root two plus 30, square root two, minus 15, square root five. So, what do we have in common? Here, I have a square root of five. Do I have any other square root of five? Yes, I do. There's a minus right here. It looks like a plus, but it really is a minus. And so I have a five square root five. And then what else? I have a square root of two and a square root of two. So it's gonna be plus five square root two for our simplified answer. And this looks like a lot of work, but if you stay with the process and you remember your binomials, you will be absolutely fine. And that does it for section 10.3, operations with radical expressions. Good day.